Hello and welcome back to my little corner of the internet. Today is a very exciting video because I have, first of all, my second guest. Uh, if you recall, my nephew Emmett was on my channel earlier this year and now Today, I'm so excited to introduce you to my mom. We've had a pretty, like a chaotic <laughs> last couple of weeks. We didn't really expect Christmas to look like how it looks this year. Christmas looks a little different this year, but we just wanted to share our story with you in hopes that maybe if you're going through something similar to what we're going through, you can feel a little less alone and see an example of hope and positivity because that's definitely how i would describe her so take it away mom well i am katie's mom terry and i'm so excited to be here and um i just want to give you a little bit of my story the past few years five almost six years ago i was diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer and it was in my liver lungs uh, on my spine and of course in my breast and um, went through a lot of chemo and um, really recovered from that. The last couple of years, I felt great. All my PET scans have been good and I've gotten my energy back. So everything was going well. And um, a couple of weeks ago, um, we found out that um, it had metastasized to my brain. So. Do it to <clears> swing <throat> a second, it's okay. Yeah. Don't just, worry. It's okay. And if anybody who's gone through someone in your family having cancer, you know what it's, uh, it's really emotional and it's hard um, on so many fronts, not just from the health perspective, but just how it changes your family and the traditions so that you have. And yeah. so, yeah, so, but, but like so. I was saying, she's for sure a fighter because yeah we're coming up on the six year anniversary and that you're a part of a very elite club yeah, to I be think here. Only 27% so. only of people make it through the first five years. So I'm really blessed to be in that group. Mm -hmm. But anyway, a couple weeks ago, um, I had an episode and I spent a couple of days in the hospital and they found out that it had metastasized to my brain. So right now I'm in the middle of 14 rounds of full brain radiation. The way that it's in my brain looks okay. I mean, I, I think the prognosis is pretty good and I it's feel- It's on the outside of her brain. It's not like deep. It's not, exactly. Deep inside. Exactly. So, so anyway, we're kind of dealing with that amidst Christmas and um, just kind of taking it one step at a time and um, having all the fun we can and, you know, trying to find that balance between rest and, you know, all the things you want to do. So anyway, I'm so looking forward to um, just having Katie pamper me a little bit. I feel good makeover. Yeah, and I didn't even introduce what we're doing, uh, but this video, I, I'm hoping that not only can you just hear our story and hopefully it can uh, inspire you if you're going through something similar, um, but also I hope that you can take from this that you can pamper yourself or pamper someone who's going through this and just Keep a positive attitude and try to do the normal things you would always do. Um, because if you looked at my mom on the street, you just passed her on the street, I don't think you would know she was going through radiation right now. So just, you never know what people are going through, especially sure. around the holiday holidays, but also your positive attitude goes so far. That's so true. With and a cancer diagnosis. Yes. And one thing that I really try to do is just... Um, use my experience to kind of inspire other people a little bit and also um, just raise awareness for cancer research and um, all the programs um, that the American Cancer Society um, have and really um, support that because we have come so far but we still have a ways to go and I think that one day we'll have more answers mm -hmm. and we've we've come a long way but we've still got a ways to go and one thing that's also very important is just be an advocate for your own health like if you know something isn't right in your body just make sure that you are persistent mm -hmm. and make sure that you go in for all of your 
tests that you need to have done and all of your regular you know checkups and appointments and don't mammograms skip mammograms and... it's don't skip them it's it's really not a fun thing but let me tell you if you don't catch a cancer diagnosis early it's really a lot less fun than going for a mammogram so yeah there's that <laughs> and i think that a really i think that the beginning the of your journey when you first found out you had cancer is an important story to share because of what she was just saying uh you went for your regular mammogram in like december october. Or, oh it was october and then by what month and then by january and it was fine my mammogram was fine in but october by, in october but by january i was having really bad abdominal pain and it just at first i thought i had a bug and it just never went away and it just kept getting worse and i went to the doctor probably um, at least three times before they did a like a CT scan of my abdomen and at that time we didn't even know it was breast cancer they only saw it in my lower lungs and a lot in my liver and um, some spots on my spine but I kind of thought they thought I was hypochondriac but I just kept saying this isn't right like you this have is to not be right. persistent so, yep and know that you you should trust yourself of course, trust science, yeah. uh, but trust yourself and your gut instincts. Mm -hmm. So um, we hope you enjoy watching this video and getting to know us. This, this is a very different side of me that I've not shared on YouTube yet. So I hope that you enjoyed this um, video. And we decided that in order to get through this very heavy topic, we had to have um, some Christmas themed everything around us like we have Absolutely. ginger yeah we have some it's christmas eve when we're filming this and we have some gingerbread french toast waiting for us in the kitchen so uh we'll see you here in a few minutes again but please keep watching if this sounds at all interesting for you it's gonna um, be fun yeah we're gonna have a lot of fun but thank you calls me at any point that's like the bad part is like i can't see if it stops recording so we have returned and we not only did we eat our gingerbread french toast i think we allowed it to digest <laughs> it's it been was a, so good yeah it was so good and so now we're back for a little makeover not that you need a makeover but it's just a good like look good feel good yeah you know always fun to be a little pampered yeah and when you're going through something that's so tough on your body it can be um hard to well it's hard like, on your skin yeah and, you know just um just makes you feel it gives you a lift yeah too. exactly yeah. so the first thing i'm gonna go through and just do a full face of makeup on her and uh, I'm gonna talk through some of it to give some tips and tricks along the way. First step here is I'm going to use the Hydrate Primer from Benefit Cosmetics and it's called the Professional. I'm gonna just put it onto the back of my hand so that it can warm up from the heat of my hand. <laughs> I know that sounds silly, but I personally, I just, Full disclosure, I am not a professional makeup artist, but I did just wash my hands. <laughs> and we have negative, obviously I have a negative COVID test that I took a couple of weeks ago, but I feel like I should um, forewarn, like start the video with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you see the texture of that? It's not like silicone, like the, um, or like a dimethicone, like the Smashbox primer that photo finish primer right. that you have from Smashbox. This is a little creamier, right? but it has a lot of the same effects. So I'm just very lightly just gonna start putting this on her cheeks. This is a really good primer for mature skin. <laughs> <laughs> mature. Mature. Because it just kind of evens things out, mm -hmm. gives you a like plumping effect. And always with primer, just kind of press it in very gentle. Be gentle with your face. And when I'm putting this primer on my own face or on hers, <laughs> I just put it um, kind of underneath or any of the areas on my face where I, my pores are a little bit bigger. So 
like on your cheeks or right around your smile lines. You have those little fine lines from, like you said, little laugh lines or you know, things you should, eyes. yeah, things we should all be proud to have because it <laughs> means you lived a good life, but just saying. And next up, I'm going to just use a tinted moisturizer. Obviously wear whatever makeup you want to wear, but as someone who has dry skin and because you uh, fine lines are a concern of yours, I think a thicker foundation will just make everything look dry and cakey. So I like to just use a tinted moisturizer. The good thing about using a tinted moisturizer is the color doesn't have to match your skin perfectly because it's very thin. I am just going to use my fingers. Okay. Sorry. This is probably not your preferred way to wear your hair, but <laughs> it's okay. But we must. And the whole point of a tinted moisturizer is just to even out the skin tone. It's not going to add a ton of coverage. I'm going to use a brush actually. Oh, this is actually a perfect brush to use. This is a from the brand It Cosmetics. This is called the Love is the Foundation brush and it's a brush they put out every October and oh. it's in honor of breast cancer awareness and a portion of the proceeds is donated to cancer research. So I feel like that's appropriate. That's very appropriate. It's a cute brush too. Yeah, and look how it's like kind of in water. I, I know, that's what I was looking at. That's... It's kind of like something I would have loved yeah. as a kid, but also I can appreciate it now. Yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah, I kind of love it now. <laughs> right. You're like the fifth person I've ever done their makeup. Because I did Tiffany's, Wedding. obviously. Um, I've done my future sister-in-laws for their family photos. Mm -hmm. I did Marley's once. I've done my nephew's makeup. <laughs> oh, my uh, other nephew's ex-girlfriend's makeup. Photos. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, so you're a, really a member of a small group. Hopefully nobody calls me at any point. I can't see if it stops recording. Alrighty, so we just sped through um, putting on the tinted moisturizer, a little bit of concealer, the tiniest mixture of the Too Faced Born This Way multi-use sculpting concealer, and then I added just a touch of the Tarte Shape Tape because I needed to lighten the color. So that's what she has under her eyes, but as you know, these are very thick, full coverage concealers, so I just used a very small amount and I blended it out with my fingers. Next, I used this Alomar Cosmetics bronzer that has um, hyaluronic acid in the formulation. So um, that is a humectant, which draws out moisture in your skin and is good for plumping your skin up. So I thought this would be good to use and I think it is very pretty, but I do wanna add just a little bit more. I think you're looking like uh, one margarita, two margarita, three margarita shots. <laughs> like you just came back from a Jimmy Buffett vacation is how bronzed you're that looking. That sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. And now we are dipping into the Glam Light Pie Palette because I want to use the Cherry Pie Blush on her, which there's already a little bit on her face, but I just want to add a touch more rosiness. And... Last but not least, I used the Dominique Cosmetics Skin Gloss in the shade Golden Dew um, because I think that this just gives a much more natural glow to the skin. It doesn't look like you're just putting glitter on the side of your cheek. And because it's a cream product, it'll blend into your skin better. Um, and I just recommend this for anybody really, but especially someone who might have like laugh lines or smile lines or anything around their eyes just helps keep you nice and glowy awesome so next up i am going to do eyebrows giving myself guiding lines it's probably a little harder because i've lost my eyebrows yeah. and they really haven't grown back very well so yeah but that's okay that's the beauty of makeup if you lose your eyebrows <laughs> you, you can, can always paint draw them on 
false lashes, wigs. Yeah, it's all good. If you couldn't tell, she had to do her own eyebrows because I, it was a challenge. <laughs> but anyway, we're back. And now on to eyeshadow. Um, I am going to use the e.l.f. Putty Eye Primer. I'm just going to use my fingers. Close your eyes, please. Dad wanted, he's in the video even when he doesn't try. Let me use a brush. I can't use my finger. Sorry. I just like, I feel like weird touching your eyeball. I don't want to hurt you. No, you're you're not hurting me at all. I know, but I just like that you just need to apply it the way the best way that's yeah, gonna work. It's gonna work. I'm just putting a little bit so that the eyeshadow has something to grip onto because I don't know why, but I don't personally like putting eyeshadow just on bare skin. But that's just me. Everybody has their preferences. Well, I think for me, if I don't use an eyeshadow primer it um just doesn't stay on right what all. do you usually use which kind um that just that same smashbox that i use on my face what well, that little um you put the face primer on your eyes oh sorry no there's nothing wrong with it that's resourceful i've never tried that before so i didn't know it would work well I didn't really know that you like super, there was a super needed a, an eyeshadow primer. No, I just like, you know, um, condense, yeah. yeah, condense all my products. Exactly. Well, and honestly, you probably don't even need them. <laughs> I'm going to go neutral kind of, but I want to do a pop of purple. Okay. It's festive. First, I'm going to go in with the shade called Sweet Potato here, and I'm just going to use the bigger fluffy blending brush just to get some shadow onto your eyes. Please close. And I love this makeup. I love this brand. Their um, eyeshadows are so easy to work with. And I'm just taking this eyeshadow with a blending brush and what I'm doing is going from the outer corner of her eye through the natural crease of her eye socket. Um, and even if you are someone who has like hooded eyelids like you, you don't really have like, I have more like lid space when I open my eyes. Um, you can just kind of slightly go above where that crease is and then it'll show up. Right. And I think that's something that happens to a lot of people as they get older, their skin just... Um... Well, and not even that, but just a lot of people even my age will have eyes mm -hmm. that are shaped like this and not know how to work with it because right. most of the like tutorials on YouTube are from people who maybe don't have this eye shape. Right. So... It's just the amazing... It's amazing how makeup can make such a difference in... Um, mm -hmm. you know, like hiding something like a hooded eye or, you know, just making your eyes appear more open. Right. And you start to learn what works for your face mm -hmm. and your eyes. That's what, it's a lot of trial and error in my opinion. Yep. I think it's just like any other art form. Yeah. So. Well, and that's the other it's thing. practice. Yeah, that's so true. Like you kind of probably naturally had the idea to to place your eyeshadow above there because you have an artistic background and you understand kind of the face shape and colors and like that makes more sense to you. But if you're someone who maybe doesn't have all of that experience. Uh, but plus I did watch a lot of I YouTube mean, videos. Yeah, I did watch some videos yeah. to see, you know, like, so oh, well, how can I do this better? And very you know, true. I didn't always improve. Absolutely. Well, oh, they're used to Winnie. We're used to the barking puppy in the background. Well, it's a cute little fuzzy puppy. Yeah. The cute little twerp. Now I'm just adding brown to the outer corner here. Is this making your eyes water? Nope. It might be watering, but it's not caused by you. Okay. 
I think my eyes are just really watery because of some of the medications and you know that's just one of those little side effects that you've got to deal, deal with. with yeah and well we know for sure it's not the Christmas tree because we have a fake Christmas yeah. tree oh we used to get a real Christmas tree every year which was amazing but Katie and I would be sick the whole time yeah we have allergies and at the time we also had a dog that we were both allergic to <laughs> so we really just like it was terrible we were suffering <laughs> For many years, <laughs> just <laughs> allergies. Yeah. This palette, I just can't get over how cute it is, and all of the palettes and, in this and in this collection. I'm not this collection, the line. but the line. Yeah, and like the fact that we can use candy cane brushes <laughs> is just very festive and cute. Very pretty. Okay, close your eyes again. Okay. No, you're totally fine. I'm just really <laughs> glad that I moved my <laughs> finger when I did because I almost touched your eyeball. <laughs> when you're putting shimmers on, just you just have to make sure that you cover all the skin. You don't want it to get like because your eye does have a fold you don't want it to get caught in the fold and then like when you move your eye a certain direction it's like wait where's the shimmer it's missing in part of it wow this is probably a weird technique if there are professional makeup artists watching this they're probably like cringing, cringing. <laughs> they're like oh gosh okay and now this is a pretty 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 shade Maybe this video could be called Transforming My Mom Into Me. <laughs> Just kidding. Because I'm kind of doing an eyeshadow look that I would wear, but I think it's pretty. Yeah, I would not call this neutral. I just want to make sure that the purple is visible, but not too much, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, make sure you don't need to go a little bit above that crease a little more. Yeah. And I just like making sure it's like blended together. And that always just takes a little finagling, you know? Mm -hmm. What's your favorite type of pie? That's such a random question. But since this is the pie palette, I think I know dad's favorite pie, but I don't even know yours. I love pie. Honestly, I love so many different pies. Like, <laughs> you can't pick a favorite. I would... I would, I'm, I love cherry, I love apple, I love pumpkin, mm -hmm. I love pecan, um, yeah, I could choose a lot of different pies. All of these? Is All she, of those. She, she would have <laughs> any, of, any of these pies. <laughs> I would not turn down a pie. Yeah, I think you'd even like the mud pie, because isn't mud pie like, uh, oh, like Oreos? Pie. Oh, coconut cream pie. Oh. Mm. Oh my gosh. You can have yeah. all of it. <laughs> I would eat all of it. Yeah, I don't and know. I'd be sorry. I am very different. My mom loves coconut and pineapple and all tropical, like, fruits. And I don't know why, but I guess I just don't like them for whatever reason. thing in life that I'm really a perfectionist about is eyeshadow. <laughs> like, I did not get the perfectionist gene, really. I mean, I love having things my way, but I'm not necessarily, I wouldn't say that I'm a perfectionist. But when it comes to blending eyeshadow, I'm like, no, I don't do it that way. You know what? The eyeshadow may just be the beginning. Yeah. May the beginning be the, the beginning. beginning of your perfectionism. Yeah. Hopefully this will stick. I don't know if your eyes are too watery. Yeah. No, but I don't want to, but the issue is I'm wearing, I'm using like a red shade. I don't want your eyes to look more like, I'm going to use brown. 
you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want your eyes to look bloodshot right. because of the color I'm using. Maybe you should use a dry brush to wipe off the, um, you know, any moisture. Yeah. And then yeah, um, that's a good idea. It. into a different eyeshadow palette just for one like mid-tone brown shade. I'm gonna dip into this Artist Couture palette into the shade called Shots because that's the energy <laughs> I, that we need apparently. Um, but I just need a better like a mid-tone brown because I, I don't think that it's the most flattering to put red underneath your eyes when your eyes are watering. <laughs> eyes look really good on the top it's just below I probably shouldn't have put stuff there so maybe I'm just gonna wipe a little okay if that's okay yep it is I mean it is like an extra little challenge when you have like an issue like a watery eye yeah. or you know I know a lot of people that have um, oily like super oily eyes and mm -hmm. it just you just have to figure out how to work with it. exactly a lot of people have this. It's pretty normal. But it's not normal to me to think about it because I'm not a working makeup artist who like, it would be normal to be like, evaluate the person, you know? Right, right. <laughs> Rather than just like go in, but that's okay. Um, We're having fun with it. Exactly. That's, what, that's what it's all about. Exactly. I'm gonna line your eyelid up top here. Okay, and I think once you put mascara on, it'll come together. What lip color would you want? Do you just want to wear like a pretty, like a pink lip gloss? Mm -hmm. That'd be easy. And I'm probably gonna skip lip liner since you don't really wear a lip liner. I do sometimes. You do? But okay, it's, well, I mean, it's totally we up don't to... have to skip it because we have, I mean, we have plenty <laughs> of options. I got one of the ColourPop lippy pencil sets. Lumiere actually is probably a really good one for you. Oh, this is a perfect shade for you. It's like your lips, but like slightly pinkier. <laughs> Okay, so this shade, this is a lip gloss from ColourPop and the shade is called Wildflower. It doesn't have any glitter in it, but okay. You could actually do the same, your, keep your lips together. I think that might actually make it easier. <laughs> Sorry, you're going. I am doing that too. <laughs> like I'm putting it on myself. I'm going... <laughs> Is it all? <laughs> no, it's not your fault. It's just I'm not here. blended in yet. <laughs> And it looks like really pale. Just kind of do this with your lips. Don't rub them. Just go like yeah, that helps so much. You don't even know. Okay. Sorry. But then I looked up and I was like, oh boy. clown at least. <laughs> Great. I hope this doesn't make your eyes water <laughs> further. <laughs> oh yeah, that is great. I just wanted, I think that that lip liner was not actually as perfect as I thought it was. Okay, you next we're gonna do mascara, but I feel like you should probably do your own. Okay. 
Mascara is really hard because I don't hardly have any eyelashes either. So I'll just do the best I can. Definitely. And uh, don't be alarmed. Like I was saying. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's a I told you it's not neutral and underneath I I just started putting like the same red shade. Yeah, that looks makes my eyes look red. That's what I was saying like I I would maybe touch up a yeah, little bit of that with a little bit of yeah, concealer. Kind yeah. Of. That's why I was saying. I was like don't be alarmed, please. I can fix this. No, just do whatever brown. Uh-huh. That's going to make a difference. You might even actually just put a little bit of um, concealer over. Yes. Real quick and then just do that part over. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is definitely going to look good. I promise. I can salvage my mistakes. After reevaluating, it's probably not the best move to put red eyeshadow underneath someone's eyes who is probably feeling sick or not feeling the best. So we're gonna try that again. And I'm just gonna go in with this brown shade for the lower lash line. Very lightly. Just so there's a slight amount of definition, but I don't wanna add too much because I don't wanna use like a red toned brown to give like the same now just the tiny tiny tiniest amount of concealer to go back i do this on myself all the time can you just look up again okay now that it's definitely fixed. Let me look at the uh, the top lash line though. I want to just neutralize slightly with smaller blush. Can you open your eyes? Okay, I truly think that made a difference. Let me know what you think. Oh, I like it. It's a lot more, it's, it's just a little more toned down. And, and then not just like pink. Yeah. <laughs> it was pink. <laughs> My dad's about to bring us some spiked hot chocolate. <laughs> it's like fly away. <laughs> so what do you do? Do you Licking. like, um, do you like the lips? Do you want to add more lip gloss yourself? I, I like it. I mean, yeah. Do you think I need more lip gloss? No, I don't think so. I just didn't know what you were thinking. But the, when I told you, I'll show you in the footage if it shows up. But like the way it looked before you like blended it was just like a blob, like a blob of like the palest pink. It just didn't look good. And, I was, and with that red eyeshadow at the beginning, I was like, oh, God, <laughs> she's going to hate this. <laughs> like my mom's going to freak out. Yeah. What do you think? I think it looks good. Okay. How's it going, Dad? He's got headphones in. I'm not paying attention. I'm just prepping. Hey, yeah, might as well. Just like... That's what this whole thing is, right? How do you think the blush looks? Do you think I have enough blush on? Maybe I should put more on now that we added a little bit more. I mean, just a touch. Like, I don't want to look right, like but... a clown. But... Right. In the... But just to counterbalance the brightness of the under eye. Mm -hmm. and... Classic Blake, not my best. Every time he pulls out of the oven, he says that, even when it is his best one. Oh. I always think he could do better, yeah. which is, that's not a bad attribute. No, not a bad mentality. All right, and now the completed look. It's a much brighter and sparklier than you would probably do on yourself, <laughs> but I guess that was kind of the point to yeah. just, Make yourself feel very glamorous. Yeah. And by the way, we wanted to end with a cheers to a happy and healthy holiday season from our family to yours. Uh, but make sure if you're cheersing back that it's a spiked holiday beverage. Yeah. Because we got some schnapps in here. <laughs> but Merry Christmas. <laughs>
Miss thank you, Kate. Love you. Love you too. And thank you for being a guest on my YouTube channel. And if you enjoyed this video, like it, share it, subscribe to my channel, maybe watch another video, um, stick around and maybe she'll come back on my channel one day. <laughs> but um, thanks again for watching. Thank you. And don't forget to wear your mask. Thank you.